How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. This is the second video in the Drawing the Mannequin series following on from the introductory video in which we had looked at the proportions. And to work out the proportions, we are going to be using the 8 head unit system by Andrew Loomis. So go ahead and watch that first video if you haven't already. And with that being said, let's get on with this one. So as you've probably noticed, this mannequin here is made up of different sized boxes, cylinders and spheres, and so because of this, it would help a ton if you can draw them. Now, in this video, I'm going to look at each of these forms which make up the mannequin, and so here on screen, I'm drawing many different sized boxes, all on different angles in perspective. Notice how when I construct these boxes, I draw through them so that you can see all sides and edges similar to a wireframe. Now it goes without saying, you're going to at least need a, a general understanding of perspective in order to confidently and convincingly draw these forms in space. I have many videos on perspective covering all the basics and more, so if you're watching this and thinking, hang on, what the hell is perspective, then yeah, maybe watch some of those first. Regardless, I'd really recommend doing something like this yourself, practice drawing boxes on different angles. Now boxes aren't the only shapes we have to deal with when it comes to drawing the mannequin because there's also cylinders. And well, cylinders can be tricky to draw because it involves drawing ellipses which are circles in perspective. I'll do the same here as I did with the boxes and draw out some of these. When I had first started learning to draw in perspective, I had a hard time doing this. Drawing ellipses is something that I found to get easier with time and experience. The more of them you draw, the better you get at drawing them. The reason why cylinders are even harder is because it involves two ellipses at both ends. And again, as you draw these, you want to draw through them, showing the ellipses at both ends like I do here. I also have a few tips for drawing cylinders and ellipses that I go over in the perspective drawing tutorial I made on the subject. Now, if you were to look at the mannequin, you'd probably notice that the cylinders are actually tapered from one ellipse to a smaller ellipse, similar to the shape of a cone with the point chopped off. This is because these tapered cylinders are better at representing the limbs of the body, our arms and legs, starting from the torso of the body and slimming down as they get to the hands and feet. So now that's what I'm drawing here, and it's not that different from drawing your standard cylinder, except you have to make one ellipse at the end smaller, and so the lines that connect them up are also tapered. Now before we move on to something else, I want to stay with this example to briefly discuss something that you'll find to be very effective when it comes to drawing the mannequin, and that is contour lines. Contour lines in this context are lines that will wrap around the forms we are drawing to emphasise their form. As an example, here I'll wrap another line around the middle of these cylinders, which in this case will be another ellipse. Contour lines are also useful for illustrating the position and angle of something in perspective. Something like a sphere, for instance, which is actually something that we'll be drawing for the mannequin. Here, for the sake of covering everything, I'll also draw a few spheres as well. These are fairly straightforward to draw, being just flat circles that are defined using some contour lines. And again, these contour lines here will be ellipses. We are essentially wrapping a rubber band around a ball, and you'll often see artists draw two of these, like so, which cross each other, but more on that later. So now let's move on to the next section. So let's say you're okay at drawing out boxes, cylinders and spheres all on different angles like you've just seen. The next step is to start bringing them together and combining these forms. This is where it gets a little more advanced because you are drawing two shapes together within the same context. You are tasked with drawing them from the same angle and in the case of this mannequin you will also have the proportions to consider being the size of each form in relation to the others. Now if you look at the mannequin you'll see which forms make up the different parts of the human figure. For example a box with a cylinder at the bottom is used for the head and the neck. A box, cylinder and another box is used to block out the torso. Tapered cylinders and spheres are used for the limbs. There's all of these forms coming together to represent the human figure. 
Now here on screen, I'm going to draw some of those parts in isolation from the rest of the body, starting with the head and neck. As I said, to draw this we'll be using a cylinder and a box. And so here, I'm doing this from a few different angles. The head, as you probably know, because you have one, can actually tilt up and down and back and forth. So to indicate this when drawing, the planes for the rectangular box will be at a different angle to that of the ellipses drawn for the cylinder for the neck. Eventually, as we move forwards with this series, we'll be developing these forms and constructing forms within them that are better at representing parts of the human figure. Here in this example, I'll do something similar, except I'll start to draw out the forms that make up the torso for the mannequin. This involves drawing out a box, a cylinder, and then another box. The larger box represents the upper torso being the chest and is typically tilted backwards in comparison to the smaller box below which represents the pelvis section. The cylinder in the middle represents the core of the body. I previously made a video explaining how the three major masses being the head, ribcage and pelvis can be blocked out using boxes and the angle of these boxes in relation to each other is something that you'll want to consider as you do this. Again though, at this stage, don't worry too much about being accurate. This is mainly an exercise to get better at drawing forms together in the same space. Finally, let's have a go at drawing out some arms and legs, and these are made up of spheres and tapering cylinders. For the mannequin, the spheres are used to indicate the position of the joints where the cylinders on the other ends can bend and pose. Here I draw some of these out, you can see how I have the cylinders on different angles, essentially placing these arms and legs in different positions. Also, as I draw these out, I'm always considering the proportions, but I don't get too hung up on having it look perfect. I'm not going to lose sleep if one arm of my mannequin is slightly longer than it should be. This is probably the trickiest part of the mannequin to draw because it involves a lot of ellipses, but again, with practice, it should get easier. So now you should be more familiar with these forms that make up the box mannequin, and if you are feeling confident, you can have a go at combining these forms and drawing the mannequin as a whole. As I said earlier, what makes this more complex is the other factors that you have to consider, these being the position of the mannequin, the angle you are drawing it on, and the proportions. All of this is something that we'll be tackling throughout this series. In the next one, we'll be looking at posing the mannequin, as well as looking at how it can be drawn from different angles in perspective. To conclude this one though, I'll spend some time here drawing the mannequin as a whole, drawing all of the forms that we have looked at together. I find that I typically start by drawing the head and work my way down, adding to the figure, and looking at what I had drawn previously. Again, what I covered in the previous video, the proportions of this mannequin, is something that I always keep in mind as I draw these out. Anyways, in the next video, we'll be drawing more full mannequins like this in different positions. For now, I'll wrap up this one here. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, then please leave a like. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.